Hello YouTube. I have a lot to show you and a lot to say in 15 minutes. First I'm going to show you the study tools I use. First uh, Holman Illustrated Pocket Dictionary, <coughs> Webster's Dictionary from 1978. You need a real good one, not the cheap ones that you can buy today. I went and even spent like 20 or 30 bucks on one that's not as good as this. You need one with all the written the words from the Latin and the Greek, where the words come from and stuff like that, not just English. <coughs> Get you a good Bible dictionary. Strongest Strong's Concordance, you need one of these. And that you need a good study Bible too. This is the one I study from all of it. Why well, you can't see it good. I got it covered. The keyword study Bible. <clears throat> you need a good keyword study Bible. It's King James Version. It's the best one to study because it's just excellent compared to the other Bibles to study. <clears throat> all right. What I'm going to be talking about is God has used symbolism all the way down through the years ever since creation. And in um, Genesis chapter 2, I'm going to start reading in um, verse 9. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life all, um, and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Now notice verse 10. And a river went out of Eden to water the garden. And from there, from the Garden of Eden, it was parted and became into four heads. I think there's a symbolism of Adam and Eve leaving the Garden and ended up mankind became four major world empires. <clears throat> okay, I'm not going to go into all the empires, but that has some to do with what I'm going to talk about. Verse 11, the name of the first, the first river is Pison. That is it which compasses the whole land of Havilah where there is gold, very significant. And the gold of that land is good. There is um, delium and the onyx stone. All right? I'm going to talk about this first river. Now, <clears throat> most of the time you read past this river, but why would God mention the name of it and that there's gold and onyx stone and that it compasses the land of Havilah? Why would he say that? Okay. It's because in Daniel 9, in Daniel chapter 7, verse 2 and 6, it shows the beast of the future. And it shows the image that Nebuchadnezzar saw in his dream. And the first one was a head of gold, which shows money. Okay, that Babylon and the whole Babylonian system all the way to the end times would be based on money and riches. All right, in uh, Daniel chapter 2, verse 38 is where the image is. Daniel 7, 2 through 6 is the four beasts. Daniel 2, 38 is talking about the image of Nebuchadnezzar and the head, the head was of gold. All right, <clears throat> then the four rivers started with the river Pison, which compassed the whole land of Havilah. Okay, now we have a president of the United States right now, President Obama. When he ran for president, the main thing he talked about was change. Okay, now notice this. This river being a symbol of world empire, and it, the president we have right now in the end times talks about change. Now, the word compasses. It's C-A-M-P-A-S-S-E-T-H in King James. And it's in the Strongest Strongs Concordance. In the Hebrew Dictionary, it's number 5,437. And it means change or turn about. Okay, so you have an image of the world empire. And it talks about change. Okay, and then <clears throat> the word Havilah. In the Hebrew, it's number 2,344 in Strong's Concordance. It means stretch of land. It also means sand is innumerable. Sand can be a um, symbol of people. because It talks about people being as the sand of the sea in the Bible. The word also, um, number 2,344, means palm tree or phoenix bird. Okay, now that's very significant because in Revelation 17, you have the whore of Revelation. She's dressed in red and purple. The phoenix bird, and you can look this up in the pocket dictionary, 
the phoenix bird and Phoenicia. The phoenix, word phoenix comes from Phoenicia. Um, Phoenicia comes from a Hebrew word named called Canaan. And Phoenicia means land of purple or red, which is matched up, matched up with Horror of Revelation chapter 17. Canaan, um, Phoenicia is English. Canaan is a Hebrew. Canaan was a son of Ham in the book of Genesis. And um, Noah had three sons, Shem, Japheth, and Ham. Ham was cursed by Noah. And one of Ham's sons was Canaan, and that's where Phoenicia came from. And Phoenicia was the land of purple and red, and that's connected to the horror of Revelation. All right. Now this Havilah is where the gold was, so it's connected to the money system, which connects you to the end times mark of the beast, so you won't be able to buy or sell without the mark of the beast. All right. Now, Havilah talks about stretch of sand, sand being innumerable. Now, Jesus spoke about, in Matthew 7, 26, he spoke about not building your house on sand. He said, if you hear my words and you do them, you've built a house on a rock, and he is the rock. The rock in um, Daniel uh, chapter 7, I believe, where it talks about a, it's either 7 or 8, where the stone uh, destroys the image and hits it on the feet and destroys it, that stone made without hands is a image is a symbol of Jesus Christ. Jesus said don't build a house on the sand, Matthew 7:26, and the sand ref can refer back to this land of Havilah that is compassed by this river where there is gold, okay? And where there's the onyx stone and precious stones and you know all these riches and stuff. Okay, now Pharaoh Jesus said, don't build your house on the sand. Pharaoh, he followed the religion of Hermetica. It was called Hermetica during the Greek Empire, but it came all the way back from Genesis chapter 3, where the serpent said to Eve, he said, your eyes shall be open, you shall know good and evil. And he was meaning through this hidden knowledge, through science and technology, you don't need God, that you can, through technology, be your own God. Jesus said, don't build your... Um, house on the sand, the word pharaoh means great house. You can look this up. For about a thousand years, when they referred to the king of Egypt, <clears throat> they talked about pharaoh meaning the house he lived in, the great house. But then they ended up calling him pharaoh, calling the king of Egypt pharaoh. The United States of America, when they talk about the president doing something, they say the White House. You know, on the news, they'll talk about, well, the White House says this, the White House says that, because the United States of America is not only the end times Babylon, but it's also the end time Egypt. And Egypt is a symbol of worldness, the worldliness. All right. <clears throat> now, if you look at the word compasses, compasses, the whole land, land in the Hebrew in Strong's Concordance is number 776. One definition is wilderness when it's com two Hebrew words combined. One of the Hebrew words is number 4057, and which they're combined, it means a desolate place, and it refers to symbolizing that God is not there. It's desolate because God is not there. Now, the word land <clears throat> in the Hebrew dictionary, number 776, and it is significant, cross references with number 778. 778 cross references with number 772, and it's all in right in here. Okay, 772 is Hebrew word Ra, the sun god again. And I've made other videos talking about the sun god and the sun god Ra, which matches up to the back of the dollar bill where you have the Egyptian pyramid and all seeing an eye at the top, which is what Satan said your eyes would be open, you shall be as gods. Then you have the sun behind that eye, which is the sun god Ra. And this word for land compasses the land, which means change. It compasses this whole land, which is called Ra, and it causes change. Barack Obama talks about change all the time and that he was going to change everything. And his speech he gave in Berlin, he called everybody, together we will remake the world. Re he talked about changing it. Okay. Now... <clears throat> <clears throat> the uh, wilderness being desolate, if you read it in the, um, just 
Strong and Strong's Concordance again. Um, number 2047. Give me a second. I want to find this. Okay. Um, 2047 through 2050. If you read it, it's got a lot of stuff in there, and I want to get to it here. I'm sorry, I didn't have it turned to this page. Um, 2047. Here we go. Sorry. Um, boy. Okay. I'm sorry. I. Um, Sorry, man, I messed up here big time. But anyway, uh, the wilderness means um, to be desolate and God's not there. I'm going to have to move on here. Okay, well, anyway, <clears throat> the river Pison had uh, the onyx and gold in Genesis chapter 2, verse 12. Okay, now if you look in Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 13, it's talking about Satan. And it's talking about God, talking about the fall of Satan. And it says the coverings of Satan are st different precious stones. One of them is the onyx stone, just like in this river Peak Pison. And it is inlaid in gold, just like the river Pison. There is gold there in the land of Havilah, where there's going to be change. Okay, now how is things going to be changed? Mainly through the money system. The world government's going to control you through the money system. And the river of Peace on the land of Havilah talks about gold and precious stones, and it talks about change, and it's going to change through the mark of the beast through riches. All right, <clears throat> now on your own, read Ezekiel chapter 28, especially verses 13 through 19. You'll see that uh, the Satan is a was an angel of music. <clears throat> talks about. The works of thy tabrets and thy pipes were prepared in you when you were created. Tabrets are like tambourines and pipes. It plays music. And that's why Satan uses music a lot in the world system. All right. In Ezekiel 28, it talks about by reason of thy merchandise and brightness. You're, you were prideful and you were lifted up and you sinned. Now you look in the world system. The merchandise is what's going to be connected to the mark of the beast. You're going to, not going to be able to buy or sell without it. Okay, and then money. It talks about the river Pison. In the river Pison, it flows. It's where there's gold, there's precious stone. It causes change. It encompasses the land. Okay, the land there is significant too because it talks of the land in um, Ezekiel 28, 17. It talks about that Satan will be cast down to the ground and he'll be cast down to the earth. It's the same word as compasses the whole land there. The whole world lies in the wicked one. Now money is referred to as water. Now if you think about it, you have liquid assets, you have money flow, you have a bank where you keep money, just like bank of a river. You have currency, which comes from current, okay? And then you have the rivers coming out of Eden, okay? Then, in the sun god Ra, Hebrews uh, Dictionary, number 7,451, cross-references cross was 7,489, 7,490, and it means to break into pieces, okay, and this raw is connected to the river, and Daniel 7.23, it says the last beast would devour the whole earth, again, the word earth there, the same as raw, the same as what Satan will be cast down to, and it says he'll tread it down and break it in pieces. So you look in the regular dictionary, the word river, Latin is ripa, just like the word you rip something. And if you look right above that, the word R-I-V-E, rive, the Old English is raw, to tear down, to tear to pieces. And Ezekiel 28, 17 says Satan will be cast down to the ground, down to the earth, the same word as the whole land of Havilah. So these rivers are a whole symbol of the whole end times and what you're seeing happening right now. God bless you.